ஹாய் வியூவர்ஸ் எல்லாருக்கும் வணக்கம் நான் உங்கள் ஸ்ருதி வந்தாச்சு இன்னைக்கு வீடியோவில் நான் உங்களே ஒரு ஸ்பெஷலான ரொம்ப ரேரான ஒரு சூப்பரான பிளேஸ்க்கு தான் கூட்டிகிட்டு போக போகிறேன் அது எங்கன்னு கேட்குறீங்களா நம்ம அடையாறில் இருக்கிற ஒடிசி புக் ஸ்டோருக்கு தான் புக் ஸ்டோரில் உனக்கு என்ன வேலை அப்படின்னு கேட்குறீங்களா இன்றைக்கி அங்கே பயங்கரமான ஒரு புக்கோட லான்ச் ஈவெண்ட் நடந்துட்டுருக்கு ஸோ அதுக்காக தான் நம்ம போக போகிறோம் அண்ட் அந்த புக்கோட நேம் பார்த்திங்கன்னா சார்கெட்ரி ஆஃப் தாட்ஸ் ஸோ இந்த புக்கு எழுதுறது யாருன்னு பார்த்திங்கன்னா வந்து ரத்னகுமார் ரகுநாத் அப்படிங்கிறவர் தான் இவர் ஆல்ரெடி வந்து த்ரீ புக்ஸ் எழுதியிருக்காரு அதுவும் இல்லாமல் அதில் ஃபர்ஸ்ட் புக் வந்து அவார்டு வினிங் புக் வேற ஸோ இவர் வந்து ஒடிசியில் வந்து பயங்கர ஃபேமஸுங்க அங்கே போனீங்கன்னா அவரோட பேனரை நீங்கள் நிறைய இடத்துல பார்க்கலாம் ஸோ இவரோட புக் லான்ச் ஈவெண்ட்டுக்கு தான் நம்ம இன்றைக்கி வந்திருக்கோம் ஸோ இங்கே வந்து ஒரே பரபரப்பாக வந்து நிறைய கெஸ்ட் எல்லாம் வந்து வந்து போயிட்டுருக்காங்க ஈவெண்ட் எப்போ ஸ்டார்ட் ஆகும் அப்படின்னு சொல்லிட்டு எல்லாருமே வெயிட் பண்ணிட்டு இருக்காங்க அவரோட ஸோ இதுதான் அந்த புக்கோட கவர் ஸோ பார்க்குறதுக்கு வந்து ரொம்ப டிஃப்ரெண்ட்டாக இருக்குல்ல அவங்க எழுதியிருக்கிற அந்த வேர்டே பார்த்தீங்கன்னா ஸ்பிளிட் பண்ணி அதுவே ரொம்ப வந்து அட்ராக்டிவாக இருக்குது அண்ட் இவர் வந்து புக்ஸுக்கு பேர் வைக்கிறதுக்கு பேர் போனவர் இவர் எழுதின மூணு புக்குமே வந்து ரொம்ப டிஃப்ரெண்ட்டான நேமில் தான் இருக்கும் பாருங்களேன் இந்த புக்கோட நேம் பாருங்கள் இது பாருங்கள் எல்லாமே வந்து ரொம்ப பயங்கரமாக யோசித்து வந்து ஒரு வேறு லெவலில் வந்து நேம் வந்து யோசிச்சுக்கார் அண்ட் அது எழுதுகிற விதம் அதுக்கு மேலே இருக்குது ஸோ அதை ஒரு நீங்கள் டூ த்ரீ மினிட்ஸ் நீங்கள் அப்சர்வ் பண்ணால் தான் அதை நீங்கள் மொத்தமாக ஒரு வேர்டாக படிக்கவே முடியும் அந்த அளவுக்கு வந்து க்ரியேட்டிவாக வந்து அவர் யோசிச்சிருக்காரு அண்ட் இவங்க தான் வந்து அந்த ஆத்தரோட ப்ரவுட் மதர் ஸோ ரொம்ப ஹாப்பியாக இருக்காங்க அந்த ஈவெண்ட் ஸ்டார்ட் ஆக போகுதுன்னு சொல்லிட்டு ஸோ ஒரு ஒரு கெஸ்ட்டாக வந்துகிட்டே இருக்காங்க அண்ட் கூடிய சீக்கிரம் ஈவெண்ட் ஸ்டார்ட் ஆக போகுது ஒடிசி என்ட்ரு ஆனதும் பார்த்தீங்கன்னா இந்த ஆத்தரோட ஃபோட்டோ நேம் அண்ட் இந்த புக்கோட நேம் எல்லாம் போட்டு ஒரு அழகான பேனர் வச்சுருந்தாங்க அண்ட் அதுக்கு முன்னாடி வந்து அழகாக அவங்க அம்மா போஸ்ட் பண்ணிட்டு இருந்தது பார்க்குறதுக்கு வந்து ரொம்ப க்யூட்டாக இருந்துச்சு அந்த மூமெண்ட் ஸோ கொஞ்ச நேரத்தில் இந்த ஈவெண்ட் ஸ்டார்ட் ஆக போகுது அண்ட் இந்த ஈவெண்ட்டை ரொம்ப அழகாக ஹோஸ்ட் பண்ணது யாருன்னு பார்த்தீங்கன்னா கெவின் அப்படிங்கிறவங்க தான் ஸோ வாங்க நம்ம ஈவெண்ட் எப்படி இருந்துச்சு போய் பார்க்கலாம் My name is Kevin to those who don't know me uh, to some of you probably some of you probably already know me I'm one of the most closest friends if I can say that uh, <laughs> so yeah uh, before I begin I would really like to thank Ratna Kumar for asking me to do this uh, to play a humble part uh, hosting this uh, conversation this event that means so much to him so i'm really glad that we're all gathered here to support him and his journey as an author so without further ado let's call him and thank you all for coming here this is the sweetest thing you could have done a lot of things on a saturday evening but you chose to be here and i mean thank you so much it's a few you guys are the best thank you um one thing that i really took away from the book is how heavily each and every work is influenced by ratna kumar's own personal life and uh, um his experiences with his own friends his loved ones and just so much of uh, a lot of personal influence in his own life uh, is reflected in the book and thank you for sharing that with all of us i think uh, a lovely aspect of uh, you know sharing your personal Uh, experiences with all of us is how we as a reader also kind of experience that and uh, the person kind of becomes shared and intimate uh and the boundaries between uh, your experiences and my experiences or our experiences are kind of blurred and we have a unique uh you know a shared experience which is absolutely lovely uh you one gets that feeling not just with this book as well as his uh, first poetry book a small as for of musings uh my question to you would be uh you ratna you are an author uh with the author being an artist as well uh the artist has a lot of uh has several mediums of expression and uh, as we all know ratna is truly a jack of all trades he can sing he can dance he can do almost anything and everything sure. under the sun sure, so why poetry why did you choose the written medium to kind of share your stories with all of us thank you so much for that kevin do something like this um so so when i started the first book i ever wrote it, it i didn't think of it as okay i'm going to write a book so it started as something a way of a means of kind of just verbalizing my sentiments and everything that um was happening within me um and then when you know i was able to process that emotion maybe a couple of years later when i saw the book again i mean saw saw the poetry again then i thought okay it's not half as bad maybe i should kind of compile it into something 
And then I was like, who's gonna wanna read about, you know, my thoughts and my feelings? Because it's my life, what if I'm not a celebrity for people to wanna know about me? Then I thought, what if I saw this not from my perspective, but just think about it, look at it from somebody else's? And it kind of did make sense to me. It made me feel like that could just be anybody else. I understand we are all people and we're different. We have different cultures, we have different uh, sentimentalities and everything, sensibilities. But it's so amazing that sometimes we're all different, yet sometimes shockingly similar. I know that we can, we have that shared thing. And in, in, a, in a poem, if, let's say I wrote about, let's say, my senior, whom I love a lot, uh, and I thank her for being this amazing support in school. But that could be uh, read by someone else, like say Rupa, uh, as something completely different, something maybe a, a guy she has a crush on probably at work. <laughs> you know? So something like that where it, the lines are kind of blurred. So for me, the most personal way of getting my thoughts out was through poetry. Because I have immense respect for people who can write a story and make it a movie, because movies are probably my favorite thing, to, like, you know, favorite thing creatively, but hopefully, and you do that already, you make movies and you write, there's a lot of your personality in there, so I think, yeah, I get that one day, but, yeah, but uh, as for now, I think this is the most personal I can get while keeping it still universal, yeah. So uh, my next question to you would also be kind of connected to the previous question. So how much of Ratna Kumar Raghunath is integrated or invested in the making and being of the author Ratna Kumar Raghunath? So are the two identities, the two entities kind of intertwined? Are they kind of uh, made on top of each other? And uh, can we expect to read something not personal from your name? And uh, do you also think that all artists are invariably kind of obsessed with their own person? Because I think, um, as an artist myself, yeah, well, yeah. yeah. So do you think we can also kind of read something that is not personal from okay. I do think that, um, so if I'm, you know, set a challenge, say, write something that is not really you, I can obviously rise up to that and write something. Um, but as I feel like my job as a storyteller is to serve the story the best. So I wrote um, my previous book, Comeuppance, which is a horror story, which kind of needed me to be a certain someone, which probably isn't really me. Yeah. Um, and but I, and having said that, um, so there's a scene. It's not really a spoiler. This happens in the first page of the story. Uh, there's the death of an animal. A wolf gets. Um, Killed, like gets hit or run over by a car. So there, that's something I don't want to kill a, a, a wolf. But you know, I have to write it a certain way. But while while writing that, I have a choice. I could have made it really gruesome. I could have made it very very gory because it is horror after all, body horror and everything. But I chose not to do that because I feel like the me. Wow, I sound like Nityananda. <laughs> the me inside me. Yeah, yeah. So I feel like the, oh God, I don't know how else to say this, but the me did not necessarily want to make it very gruesome. I didn't want to shock the readers through that. There, there was other means I could do it. So I feel like however it is, however different, because even in this uh, book, there are poems that are not really about me. but. I'm sure there's some part of me there because then, like, why do we need other authors? Because you have like Stephen King for horror, right? He's the best, I, according to me. So we don't need other voices, but I feel like we need different people to bring in perspectives and bits of themselves into their art so that it becomes unique. So I think uh, that that's that's what I mean. Actually, <laughs> I think that has a lot uh, to do with your big treasure of empathy that you have. And what are some of the challenges? that you face while writing. Uh, generally, number one, generally while writing, how has your writing uh, habits or you know your process changed from writing back in your school days? How's your writing process now? Generally, while writing your first flash fiction, Elevator, um, and while writing Smoker's School of Musings, your first poetry book in English, and uh, probably, um, let's share with your thoughts. How 
how would you describe your writing process? And how long should the author need to kind of soak in the craft to be seasoned enough? Thank you so much. Uh, I, I'm not someone who's a seasoned author, I believe, for me to be able to comment on that, really. But I can just talk about my experience in the sense that initially, um, so you know how you watch a movie and then you're like a sudden um, fan of their work. There's like the Diddy and Tarantino fans and things like that. So it was like that. I read a book and I loved it and I became like a Diddy uh, writer of a horror story. So I wrote this flash fiction because I really loved that lady's work. Uh, her name is Laura Purcell. She writes amazing books. So then I thought, because I already did write a, a few stories in, the, in my school and then they won awards and things like that. So I thought, why not send it to a, a magazine? Uh, we had, they had a competition and I sent it and it won. So because it won that um, prize, um, so then that's why it was published. So it was never like the intention again. But that's when uh, I was going through personal stuff and then smorgasbord happened. So it was all, it just became very organic. But I'm like there are, there are authors who sit down every day and meticulously write a thousand words, and I'm not one of those. I I wish I could be, but I'm getting there. I'm trying to even this book. So I, what I usually find very interesting right now is I suggest if anyone wants to write, start typing it out on your uh, laptops or something like that, as opposed to write in, in like a book or paper because um, digitizing that takes a while because I write handwrite my poems. And then for me to change that into the computer thing, it's like, I understand it helps sometimes you get a second look and think, okay, even the mamat now we can change this and all of that. But I still feel like, for me, what works is if I feel something, if I think about something, I need to take my phone and record like a voice note or something like that. Uh, I remember what come up is the idea came to me while I was on the metro. I was just like in the metro and suddenly thought of something. I was like, wait, I just took the phone and recorded the, the, the end of it, the climax of the story. And so, and then you go back home and then try and marinate that thought. I used to walk my dog Noah, who's uh, not with us anymore. But when I used to walk him, I would think about these things, and it's always like a little, little, little thing that works with you, like a je ne sais quoi that kind of clicks on your mind, and then I initially work around it. So that's how my process is. Yeah. Um, love seems to be like a constant light motive in all of your books. So, what it's almost like his body of work is in love with love. So, what is it about this feeling that makes you want to write about it, probably knowingly or unknowingly? We'd like to know. And uh, what do, and what is love according to you? And why do we as readers, or moreover, more, as human beings, need to or want to read about love? What is it about this state of the heart? Again, yeah, it's not an easy question to answer. <laughs> uh, but I don't think I've written any poetry that's half as good as, as beautiful as how you said, like poetry is in love with love. I don't think I've written anything as beautiful as that. So, <laughs> so, yeah. So I'm glad you're not writing books. Um, but listen, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but um, honestly, I, I mean, we can all sit and think about this. We can get philosophical, and then you know, you can be like, oh, stoicism and existentialism and all that. But what really is the uh, essence of life, or what, why do we like? What, what do we do really? What is life and the purpose and all of that? So of course, one gets to think about these things, especially while having showers and things like that. <laughs> and I realize the point of life, I think, is to be happy or we're all trying to be happy and in my life what makes me happy is love so what love does to me is make me happy and it doesn't necessarily have to be romantic love it could be love for a friend even self-love or even just going and let's say buying an album of an artist that you like like you know I love Celine I will just go buy an album and then listen to music um, and that would just the, my love for her is what fuels that happiness in me so I believe that, you know, I, I, I remember writing in the first book, as Snobby Sport, I wrote, what does it even mean to be human if it is not to love? Because for me, I feel like that is what it is all about. Love is, um, I mean, I mean the, the expression is hopelessly romantic. Maybe I am, I don't know, hopefully romantic, I don't know. I'm a little more, I, 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 I you know, I want to believe that 
love can help. Uh, I believe in the power of love and all. It's very kind of cheesy, but the point is, it might be necessarily be, like I said, romantic. It's just the fact that you guys are even here today is a testament to that because, you know, I mean, it's really that, you know, you, this is love, the love that you have for, I'm not saying me, but just the, the fact that you want to be in, here in support. I think this is still love and it kind of speaks to what I write about. Like, I, again, it's a Saturday, you guys can be elsewhere, you can do fun things, but this is still love and the very fact that we are here to share that with each other um, kind of proves why love is very essential and I still think reading about it will just um, maybe remind you of something in your life that's worthy of being loved or worthy of love as well. Yeah, absolutely. So can we all love you further? So could you just read us a small piece from your book? Shorter poem is slightly longer poem. What do I read? Both. Um, <laughs> yeah, both. Okay. Uh, yeah, I think maybe you're I it's So, um, my mom, uh, who's here, doesn't speak uh, English, so I was always in a poem where she won't be able to understand my poems. So, I wrote a little thank you in Telugu. Um, I don't speak it, but this is the first time she was able to read something that I wrote and she teared up. So I'm very happy about that. Um, anyway, so uh, the poem that I'm going to read, I think it's called Courage. Courage means courage. Um, it's, a it's a shorter poem. I see courage everywhere. I see it when the deer breaks itself free from the grip of the cheetah. I see it when the wildebeest chase away the lions. I see it when the mother bird takes her babies under her wings. I see it when princesses save themselves. I see it when immigrants speak in the tongue of their newly found home. But most of all, I see it in you. I see it when you have the chutzpah to say no to something you don't want to do. I see it when you choose to swim back up from the depths of your melancholy. I see it when you stand up to fight a bully. I see it especially when, despite having your heart broken before, you let yourself fall truly in love once more. Ooh. That's lovely. So what's cooking next at your writing station? What can we expect from your name? Ooh, writing station. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I have a couple of things. I've just, I've been, so for Pride Month, we're still in June, right? Yeah. yeah, so Pride Month, I'm supposed to put like a story out. I wrote one called Cash Makers I'm Falling. That was, uh, was quite well received, it was kind of surprising. But um, so it's a digital Pride series. Jenny kind of gave me that idea uh, to kind of write uh, <laughs> in the theme of Pride every year. So I should technically put out a story by the end of this month. I hope that works. It's called Piano. It's about uh, two women, uh, Pia and Noel. So I hope that works. Oh, wow. So, questions from the audience? So I see that it's a charcuterie of thoughts. Uh, what is the next title? Because I know you have a certain theme when it comes to titles. Yeah. And you've, I think you've used two uh, planter related titles. <laughs> I see that I'm quite curious because your, your English is insanely good. So I was wondering if there's some other word uh, the general population would probably not understand. So I was just hoping you could give us another. Thanks, Abhi. That's uh, my friend from work. That's like a brother to me. Thank you, Abhi. Um, so, uh, yeah, so the, obviously it's a theme, and I, I, might, I have to say this. So, I wasn't sure about the title for this book, but I was talking to my friend who's here, Makrant Mac, right there. Uh, I was just talking to my work saying, you know, um, Smoggy's board is like a, you know, platter with like different kinds of cheese, meat, and fruits, and everything. So he was like, oh, like a charcuterie board. And I'm like, yes, yes, charcuterie. Then I was like, charcuterie for your thoughts. So it's like, I don't know if you guys have watched Schitt's Creek, that show where Rosa Papa Carey, I think Patrick says, it's the right amount of pretentious. So which is what it is. It is kind of pretentious, <laughs> but it's the right amount of pretentious. So I think in the next book, I, I hope to write a third one to complete like a trilogy of this. So then Rupa was saying something like kaleidoscope of uh, reflections or something like that. So we'll think about it. I don't know if it's going to be food related, Abhi, but I'll, I'll try. <laughs> More questions? So you Another Abhi. <laughs> yeah. So you've already written books in English and French. 
Is there any other language you want to write? No? <laughs> I know you know Spanish. Yes. <laughs> I, 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 don't, I don't think I'm good enough in Spanish yet to get there, yeah. but I hope to do it some, someday. I really want to. Um, it's just that I feel like even the French poetry that I've written is somewhat, you know, there's words that are so beautiful in each language that it, it, you can't really translate it to the same level of nuance. I think if I get there with Spanish, I will do it. Uh, we have been friends for what, 12 years. This is the first time we are meeting. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, myself being a book lover, when uh, Kevin told like you know Ratna's book launch yesterday, then I have a book, big bookshelf with close to 500 books. So today my bookshelf is going to be decorated with my friend's book in my bookshelf. So I wanted to be here to, uh, to, uh, to, to witness this. And uh, I mean, yes, I, this is his fourth book. I wish I am I would be there for his 40th and given 100th or whatever book. So yes, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> I, I just know him as somebody who's great with languages. It's one of the things, like uh, Kevin as well speaks ex excellent, impeccable German, and he speaks French and German. German I cannot, but uh, yeah, I have a lot of respect for people like that, especially him. And I'm just so glad you're here. Thank you. And all the people there that I'm seeing, thank you so much. So sweet of you to, to have come. Hey, Jack. <laughs> hey, Ashwin's here too. Uh, Vignesh, everyone's here. Uh, um, yeah, okay. No questions? So he says, read the French one. There's no French poem in this book, Kevin. <laughs> um, it's called L'Obscurité, which means darkness. Um, all I see is darkness. I've been inside the belly of the beast for hours now. Having nearly surrendered to my fate, I close my eyes. Because keeping them open doesn't serve any purpose. My eyes don't do what they're intended to do. I'm all alone in this pitch blackness, marinating in the beast's digestive juices. Shouldn't I have been dead by now? When all is lost, how am I still breathing? More importantly, why am I still breathing? Am I waiting for someone to come save me? Can anyone even pull me out of this obscurity? Is there still a glimmer of hope within me? I stay there and watch my breathing become more and more strained. I know there are people outside. I can hear them. They know I'm dying inside. I hear cries. I can hear them try. They are fighting the beast from outside. It's not going to be easy. The beast is gargantuan. They are not going to get through to me. It is over. I am going to die. And just as I start to give up completely, I hear a voice from outside the beast. Though muffled, I can tell it is someone familiar. It is you. Don't give up. Fight. You can come out of this alive. I need you. I love you. I love you too, I say almost involuntarily, as my words resound in the hollow chambers of the colossal beast that is holding me captive. I realize that neither you nor anyone else can fight this beast for me. This is my battle. I have to fight it from inside. I don't know what it is that came over me, but I feel like I have the strength of a thousand elephants now. That little flicker of hope has now been fanned into a flame by my love for you, by your love for me. A raging flame that can annihilate the beast from within. I bury my fingers, nails and all, into the warm interior monster flesh. I claw at it. I do not stop. With all my might, with every ounce of my leftover strength, I tear open its stomach from inside. The first rays of light hit me as the beast screams in defeat. I jump out of it. I can breathe easily again. I am free. Now I know one thing for sure. No one could have fought this battle for me. No one could have saved me. I had to do it on my own. I had to find hope. I had to remember I have things worth living for. I fought knowing you were there to cheer me on. I won the battle. I rescued myself. Choice. Yes. <laughs> Let's go. What do I sing? I sing. What are you? What are you? Ratna singers in India. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I sing in French. 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 A little reverb. A la porte, côté seuil, toutes ces feuilles 
qui sont menteurs. Ceux de ces pelles-là que je ramasse, ça me rappelle à ma place. Dix heures, tu m'as laissé, tout seul, tu me fais côté. Dix heures, j'ai pas la clé de tomber, tomber. Dix heures, mais mon été, le prix ne m'a pas lâché. Dix heures, mais mon été, tomber, tomber. செமையா பாடினாருல ஒரு செலிபிரேஷன் ஒரு கேக் கட்டிங் மூமெண்ட் இல்லாம எப்படிங்க ஸோ இந்த புக்கு மாதிரியே ஒரு கேக்க நம்ம இப்போ ரத்னகுமார் வந்து கட் பண்ண போறாரு ஸோ அந்த மூமெண்ட்டை பார்த்து என்ஜாய் பண்ணுங்க And this was one of the cutest moments. So, on the beautiful moments, we have to take photos and selfies and we have to talk about it and we have to purchase books and we have to take it and we have to take this book and this is the cost of just 299 rupees and this is the Odyssey and this is the Amazon and the book price is $299 and this is the value and the value and the value and the value and the price especially when they are in the language and the English and they are in the same level and they are in the same class எக்ஸ்ட்ரா படிச்ச மாதிரி உங்களுக்கு ஒரு ப்ரமோஷன் கிடைச்ச ஃபீல் வரும் அந்த அளவுக்கு வந்து இங்கிலீஷ் வந்து ரொம்ப நல்லா இருக்கும் அண்ட் அது மட்டும் இல்லைங்க புக்ஸ் வாங்குற எல்லாருக்குமே வந்து ஒரு ஆட்டோகிராஃப் வேற பண்ணி கொடுத்தாரு அது ரொம்ப ரொம்ப எக்ஸைட்டிங்காக இருந்துச்சு அண்ட் அது மட்டும் இல்லை இன்னொரு சூப்பரான ஃபேக்டர் என்னன்னு பார்த்தீங்கன்னா நம்ம அங்கே பர்ச்சேஸ் பண்ணும்போது கொடுக்குற பேக்ல கூட வந்து அந்த ஆத்தரோட ஆட்டோகிராஃப் போட்டுருந்துச்சு ஸோ இந்த வீடியோ உங்களுக்கு கண்டிப்பாக பிடிச்சிருக்கும் நான் நம்புறேன் அண்ட் உடனடியாக போயிட்டு நீங்களுமே வந்து இந்த புக்ஸ் ஆர்டர் பண்ணுங்க அண்ட் இன்கேஸ் உங்களுக்கு அது எப்படி வாங்கணும்னு தெரியலன்னா என்கிட்ட சொல்லுங்க ஐ ஹெல்ப் யூ அவுட் அண்ட் மறக்காம என்னோட வீடியோ வந்து லைக் பண்ணுங்க அண்ட் என்னோட சேனலை சப்ஸ்கிரைப் பண்ணுங்க தேங்க்யூ